Welcome to the third part of our big tutorial series, Facial Expressions with Test-Driven Development. Before we are able to develop facial expressions with TDD, we need to do some preparation. We already learned how to wrap Unity game objects so that we are able to mock them with the Mock for c -sharp framework. Wrapping Unity objects allows us to make our classes testable. In this video, I'm explaining the other benefits of using wrappers. Also, we'll make our wrapper classes serializable in order to see and change them in the inspector in Unity as if they were standard Unity objects. Before we start the tutorial, I want to say thanks to our patrons who help us to make these tutorials and our game Cortex possible. A special thanks goes to Simon Zineder, David Heinzel, Melina Brunner, Robert Hartl, Reinhard Bauer and Maximilian Heinle. Thank you so much for your support. And if you like our tutorials, then please support us on Patreon as well. Now let's jump into the video. Serialization – Making wrappers visible in the inspector In the previous video, we recreated the hierarchy of the game object class with interfaces. I game object inherits from I object, like game object inherits from object. We also added the setActive method to I game object with the same structure of the setActive method in Unity's game object class. Those steps made our activator class testable. With a price, we are not able to inject the object which should be activated by the activator class via Unity's inspector anymore. Let's tackle this problem. You all know that Unity is only able to serialize non-generic classes. So of course, we are not able to serialize interfaces. That's why we have to create additional wrapper classes for each corresponding wrapper interface. This may sound useless and complicated, but please wait a moment. I prefer to call those classes uGameObject and uObject. The u stands for Unity, so the uGameObject wraps a Unity game object. Okay, let's create those scripts in Unity. Now open uObject get rid of the mono behavior stuff and realize the i object interface. Since we want to make the wrapper classes visible in the inspector, you have to make u object serializable. Also, make the class abstract. Then open u game object which inherits from u object and realizes the i game object interface. Mark it as serializable as well and implement the setActive method. UGameObject wraps a Unity game object. So add a serialized game object field. We'll implement a better solution in a second. For now, this is good enough. In the setActive method, pass the call to the setActive method of the wrapped game object. In the activator class, add a serialized UGameObject field. Back in Unity, the wrapper is accessible from the inspector. You can drag and drop a game object into the wrapped field, but yet it doesn't look good and is quite unhandy to always fold out the wrapper in order to access the wrapped game object. We will create a custom property drawer which is compatible with wrapped Unity objects in a moment. Before that, we have to somehow use the private serialized field and the public property object to activate. The problem here is that Unity is only able to serialize non-generic classes, whereas our property expects an interface. For debugging reasons, you want to see the values within the inspector in real time. So when another script changes the value of the property in the activator, it should be visible in the inspector. So the getter simply returns the serialized field, and in the setter, we have to cast the value with the as keyword. Looks good, right? When we assign the object to activate field in the inspector with the disable directional light and hit the play button, the light is activated as expected. Well, let's see what happens when we run the test we wrote in the previous part of this tutorial series. It fails. The problem here is that if the value isn't of type uGameObject, the ask keyword returns null. In the case of our test method, we pass a mock object instead of a uGame object. So the value gets null and the test fails. 
My solution for that is to introduce a private field of type iGameObject, which is returned in the getter only if the uGameObject is null and is assigned with the value in the setter method. So if you pass a value of another type than uGameObject, the serialized field in the inspector appears to be null, but the value is kept in the private field and each access to the object to activate property returns this value. The drawback here is that you need extra boilerplate code and the performance of your game is slightly reduced due to the null checks and additional assignments. You always have to ponder the benefits and drawbacks of using wrappers in your specific situation. Each decision comes with a price. Draw for wrappers. In the previous section of this tutorial, we've added a serialized game object field to the uGameObject class. In order to create a universal custom property drawer for each Unity object wrapper, we have to make uObject generic and add a generic type constraint. tWrapped must be of type object, because then the field of type tWrapped can be serialized by Unity. To expose the field to the public, we create a wrapped property. Switch to the uGameObject script and delete the serialized field. Specify GameObject as the generic type of uObject. Back in Unity, create an editor folder and insert a new script called uWrapperDraw. Open it and as always get rid of the money behavior stuff. Mark the class as a custom property drawer of type uObject with a generic type of... Hmm, that's a pity. As with serialization, Unity doesn't allow you to create custom drawers for generic classes. But there exists a really cool workaround. Create another script called uWrapper, open it, delete the mono behavior code and mark it as serializable. Now let uObject inherit from that new class. Switch back to your custom drawer and specify the uWrapper as the type. Also, set the second parameter to true. Inherit from property drawer and overwrite the onGUI method. Begin and end the property and draw the label with the prefix label function. Even though uWrapper doesn't contain a wrapped field, it can be found in the uObject superclass using the findPropertyRelative method. Lastly, draw the field of the wrapped property. In Unity, you can see that you can't distinguish between a game object and a wrapped game object anymore. You can directly drag and drop the light from the scene into the game object slot. Benefits and drawbacks. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about the benefits and drawbacks of wrapper classes. Let's start with the benefits. First, as mentioned in the previous part of this tutorial series, wrappers make your classes mockable and therefore testable. Second, with wrapper classes, upgrading to a new Unity version is easier. It happens very often that some Unity APIs get obsolete. If that is the case, you have to change each line in your scripts which uses the obsolete call. When using wrappers, you only have one single point of access for each Unity API call. So you only have to change the call within your wrapper class and the rest of your scripts remain the same. For example, maybe Unity declares the setActive method as obsolete and recommends you to call activate and deactivate methods instead. Then you would only have to change the code inside your wrapper class, whereas each setActive method to the wrapper remains the same. Third, wrapper classes guarantee compatibility between Unity, plugin and your own custom implementations. What does that mean? For instance, Unity provides an input field class for processing textual user input. But there are also some plugins available like TextMesh Pro, which have their own implementations for input fields. Since you already defined an interface iInput field for wrapping Unity's input field, you could easily wrap the TextMesh Pro implementation as well, using the iInput field interface. With that done, the Unity and the TextMesh Pro solutions are interchangeable. 
This is especially useful if all of your code was designed for Unity's input field and during the development of your game you want to use TextMesh Pro instead. Without the common iInput field interface, you would have to change all the scripts of your game which work with Unity input fields. In general, universal wrapper interfaces allow you to make completely different solutions exchangeable. Here are the drawbacks. First, using wrappers is slower from a performance point of view, since you have an extra call from the wrapper to the wrapped class. Second, it takes time and work to build up the wrapper infrastructure. Third, wrappers insert another layer of complexity. You need to add a lot of separate interfaces and classes to your project. I hope you slowly get used to the concepts of wrapping Unity objects and be aware of the pros and cons when using them. Decide on your own if it makes sense in your situation. In the next video, I'm showing you how to mock static functions like the instantiate function defined in the object class. After that, I think we are ready to tackle the implementation of facial expressions. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our newsletter, support us on Patreon and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day, it's your sensei.